This week on Phantom Power Hour. And this is him speaking. Mm -hmm. It's like, I realize I make microphones, but really all this stuff should get out of the way and you should be making art. And like, that's how I feel. And I was chatting to him about this in particular because I could see a lot of uh, utility with a horn player that likes effects. I would be curious to be in the room when they brought this up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the mounts on all of these Lauten mics are so cool. Jeez, you sound like a shill. Hey, listen. <laughs> I'm just speaking the truth. Speaking the truth. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> I have an opinion. Yeah, I know. Lauten's going to back up my truck up. I was editing that Grace video. And I was like, oh, man. <laughs> this, is, this might be received really well, or everybody's going to be like, oh, he's shilling. It's hard, it's hard to have an opinion about it is. anything. Especially because that pedal is not the most affordable thing in the world. And mm -hmm. it doesn't make a drastic difference in the tone. But I think that's the whole point. Because other things that it competes with would make a drastic difference in the tone. For better or worse. Right. It's like they're going for something completely different. Are we just jumping in right here? I, I suppose so. <laughs> I guess that's where we are. Yeah. <laughs> Should we grab it? It's just right there. Yeah. I'll go, I'll go snag it. There it is. Right here. And video magic, it just appeared. Mm-hmm. I don't know how that works. Uh, well, magic, mostly. Two centerpieces today. Mm-hmm. So, it's not cheap, but I also kind of think, and I'm going to make a whole video on this, mm -hmm. but I feel, I'm, feel like my title, without giving everything away, which I'm now giving away, <laughs> is I think I'm going to just basically say, like, they named it wrong. Or they're marketing it wrong. I for sure agree with that. Is it's the form factor is weird. It's marketed as a preamp, which I see. I get what they're doing. It's not a lie. No, it's definitely a preamp. No, and I mean I totally see what they're doing because you could have you, it's the whole thing's built so you could plug pedals into it, so you could use it as, like, as a vocalist if you want to, or it's like a studio quality preamp that you can also just sit on the desk and it's right here. Mm -hmm. Got. A super stupid clean preamp. Yes. Stupid clean. And this is not sponsored, by, by the way. <laughs> We're just talking about gear right Shilling now. for free. Uh, but the EQ is confuses me um, in a good way. It's like they have this super clean preamp up here, and then you have like a, a Neve style EQ. Not that you're going to get like saturation, but the points where the eq hits are very like if you use a 1073 it seems very reminiscent of that mm -hmm. so you have this stupid clean preamp crazy useful eq the ability to use it as a di or a preamp line out there's tuner sends amp out yep. sends like my mind goes to di when i use this precisely yeah and I mean, not to throw too many hot takes out there too fast, but it seems like if it were up against this and like another super popular base DI that is like what more than twice as expensive as this, right? Oh, yeah, we the did noble, the math. yeah, the, the noble. noble, which I know there's a whole following around the noble. It's, I mean, it seems like it's basically just a Neve front end without an eq i mean there's a little bit of an eq on that thing and this does a different thing much cleaner way cleaner for sure yeah, but it's this seems way more versatile for less than half the price yeah and i can i can see the argument for the noble because you get the characteristic imprint and that's what a lot of cats like for the aguilar preamps or even the aguilar heads and mm -hmm. there's a bunch of base gear that guys and gals use to get the characteristic of that gear. Mm -hmm. um, but I come from the perspective of, I like to hear my bass. That's- I like to see your face. Let's oh. move this down. <laughs> <laughs> get that in your face. There you go. Well, technically out of my face. Okay, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for me as a bassist, I like hearing what my bass sounds like naturally. Mm -hmm. um, and 
that's one of the reasons why I've chosen the type of rig that I use. Um, I love the Aguilar sound. I love the Mark bass sound. I love the Ampeg sound when I want those sounds, but I don't like having that characteristic imprint all the time. And that's why I would gravitate towards something like this because it's very transparent. It, the mm. EQ is effective, but like you're saying, it doesn't do that same kind of saturation that you might get from no. something that's in a similar vein. But this is the cleanest low end bump was I goosed it Me on too. my, and it sounds fantastic. It is just fat and full, but very little harmonic addition. It's just mm -hmm. the low end of your bass. Yeah. Which is really cool. It's super cool. Um, I found, I, I like this on all my bases. I tried it out with all of them. And the one I like it on the most is my single cut Marco. Um, that one is incredibly transparent, it has a Glock and Clang preamp. That's super clean. Um, it, Glock and Clang does the same thing where it's like, here's your, your uh, hot word, the wood tones, here's, <laughs> here's your wood tone <laughs> and that's it. And it, it does a similar thing with the EQ where, uh, it just does a really clean, clean booster cut. And with this, I can really beef up that low end because that bass on its own has kind of a weaker low, uh, like frequency, uh, like a low output. fundamental ring to it. Uh, the opposite of that. There's so, no, so there's no fun, low fundamental. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There's less low fundamental to that oh, bass, I see what you're saying. uh, which is good for me. It's strung E to C. That's the, the bass I use for, uh, doing like chord comping and jazz and things like that. So I don't want to have a whole lot of that low fundamental, but mm. I want it to be full without the mud. Goose the bass on the on, goose the bass on the grace. <laughs> We're a rapping podcast now, and it it just started singing. Um, and I I was I was kind of filming some stuff for this, and I made a statement like if it was only the EQ and the preamp, I would still want to get it without the bells and whistles of being able to plug XLR in and have the effects loop and have the boost on there. Yeah. And like, that's the hard part about this is like having an opinion about anything on YouTube with, with my other channel recording studio loser. It's like, it, if a, if something is sponsored or not, and I have any opinion, it's like, Oh, you're a shill. But here we don't have to say anything about <laughs> this thing. <laughs> We uh, could trash it if we wanted oh, to. Oh, yeah. I mean, and honestly, on my other channel, I don't even have to make a video about it. That's like, I try to set up the stipulation. Like, I had a conversation with a company yesterday, and they're sending something. I'm not going to say what it is right now. It's coming. I'll tell you later. Mm -hmm. It's pretty dope. Oh, nice. But super small company, like family owned. Uh, I honestly didn't know of their existence until they reached out. Um, and super cool de design philosophy microphone stuff and i basically we had a great conversation for like 30 minutes just talking and like shooting shooting the crap basically <laughs> yeah and it was just a, a cool guy who was interested in like just talking audio and i mean everybody's background on this so if you get the companies small enough like they just got into it because they like music exactly and you're just talking to people like they're people and then eventually it comes up, well, do you want to try a microphone? I'm like, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know how, like, I don't know if I can get to it, but if you want me to try it, I'll happily try it. If I don't like it, I'm going to send it back because I don't need microphones. Right. Like, for being real, like. Yeah. Such a first world problem, Jeremy. I know. I realize how <laughs> douchey that sounds coming out of my mouth. But, like, I don't. And we and we talked about this, me and, me and that guy on the phone. He's like, I realize I come from the place of making gear. And this is him speaking. Mm -hmm. It's like, I realize I make microphones, but really all this stuff should get out of the way and you should be making art. And like, that's how I feel. I'm, and I'm in a weird position where I have a ton of microphones from a ton of different companies. And you get to see like the sonic imprint and the intentions of a company behind their design philosophies and how they build their stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't know where all this is going. This is just an early it's going morning. Somewhere. This is an early morning rant, I guess. <laughs> but talking to him, I was like, look, I 
I I would love I think it'd be interesting because this is different than anything that I have. Um functionality wise and utility wise, it's different. I'm racking my brain trying to figure it out. <laughs> if I'm you wanna cut it out, it's a Oh, okay. Uh it would it's it's wild the way it works. And I I didn't know they were a company, but I was like, I would I would love to try it. I'm curious how it could affect things that I do here, but I can't guarantee you a video. And he was like, no, that's that's fine. If you don't like it, just send it back so I can give it to somebody who likes it. I was like, I'm fine with that. Let's mm -hmm. do that. Um, a, a quick interjection. Do you find that that is more often the case with companies trying to like send out gear or is it more rare to have that kind of response of, if you don't like it, that's cool. Send it back so I can give it to somebody else that likes it. With, with smaller companies, yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's one company I feel bad about it was audio scape i don't i've posted this i haven't made a video on it yet they sent me a compressor and he talked to him for a long time super cool guy um he sent me a g style compressor because he wanted me to try it mm -hmm. and i i freaking love it but it's worked its way so deep into my workflow that i'm like i haven't made a video on this because i don't even remember that it's there mm -hmm. because i use it that much and that's <laughs> that's weird so sorry audio scape uh, I will make a video, <laughs> but <laughs> no, the smaller companies are very much like that because the, the guy I was just talking to is like, look, I, when I see stuff sitting on my shelf, I'm like, you're not, you're not doing anything. You're not contributing anything. And he tries to send it out into the world somewhere, Yeah, whether it's being sold or just getting into somebody's hands who may like shine a light on the product itself. But, mm -hmm. um, Anytime I get into those first conversations, I try to like slow it down. Like I try to make sure I have time to talk because I want to know like, okay, who's calling me? Where are you in the hierarchy of the company? Right. How much do you know about the company? Because I've talked to a handful and they don't know crap about what yeah. they're selling. Like they might just be marketing people. And those are companies like I've decided like, okay, maybe even I really, really want these mics because they sound awesome mm -hmm. and I may still buy them at some point, but it's really hard to want to show that on camera just because, I don't know, the that relationship has been soured in some way. Like either they're not interested or they don't seem proud of what they're doing. Right. Maybe it's, that's the it's better way just to like, it. that's their role. I'm here to contact people that can yes. help make the product more viable to the market in some way. And I get it. At a certain point, a company is going to get so big that you need people like that. But mm -hmm. at the same token, like maybe those people reaching out to the people you want speaking for your company or speaking on behalf of your company or shining the light towards your company should be knowledgeable of the product itself. Yeah. And that gets annoying but uh, most people i work with are very knowledgeable and total nerds mm -hmm. and total geeks about what they're building and it's really interesting to see everybody else's like ideas behind what's what yeah in the last episode we were talking more so about luthiers and and manufacturers of instruments yeah. and stuff but in the same vein that's what pulls me towards small luthiers mm -hmm. is because they're doing it out of passion they know so much about it and that's the kind of person that I want to be dealing with if I'm interested in getting an instrument or at least learning about the process or what their take on um, a specific type of instrument is or something. Mm hmm But so the Roxy. Oh, yeah. This thing. Yeah. <laughs> How did we get here? <laughs> Somehow. We, we found our way. I... Going back to the, the marketing side of it, it's, it's marketed as a microphone preamp. It's labeled as a microphone preamp. Mm -hmm. It does that. It does way more. I, part of me worries that it's not going to get a lot of traction because of the price point And because of from, if, if I were to see this pedal a handful of years ago, I would have listened to demos or watched demos or even tried it out and be like, yeah, this doesn't really do anything. I'm not going to drop this much money on something that doesn't really do anything. Mm -hmm. It obviously does a lot, but it's, to, it's weird. Yeah, it is definitely a utility as opposed to some type of effect, which is interesting in this form factor. Mm -hmm. um, 
But some of the use cases that I could see, I, I did a, a wedding gig over the weekend and I was talking to the sax player and um, I have a, a few friends around town that play into like a micro pog and have a, a little mini pedal board for their, their saxophone and everything, which is super fun sound. Mm -hmm. And I was chatting to him about this in particular because I could see a lot of uh, utility with a horn player that likes effects, but absolutely doesn't have a way to blend it in easily from mm -hmm. their pedal board. And that's what this has. It has the effects loop and you can blend in dry to wet as much yep. as you want with a microphone input that has a crazy awesome preamp. So, I mean, I could just see this living on a pedal board for an experimental horn player or even a keys player. I could see this being a really good utility. Um, if it, if you're playing like something mono, like a Rhodes. Yes. Because yeah. um, it is just a mono thing. You could get two of them, but that would get that would be exorbitantly absurd. expensive. But even back to the point of the, the price point of this, like $800. Mm -hmm. uh, that seems like a lot. But if I back up and I'm like, this is marketed wrong. If they're like, this is the world's most versatile base DI. And they approach it like that, it would be cheap in that world. Yes. And it would absolutely fit right there. Yeah. And it would do that thing. Like, it is it is it is very much a highly, highly effective bass DI. And I think that's how I'm honestly probably going to use it most of the time. Yeah. Either on bass, and I have a ready. Mm-hmm. And that thing sounds tasty. It sounds great. But this seems way more useful. Yeah. And the now, roads. Stack them. Could you actually? Because the output of... Well, no, you totally could, because this has an amp output. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we didn't mention that yet. You could use that as a DI, but it also has a line out for an amp output with its own dedicated uh, output volume for that output. Yeah. And there's an effects send, too. So, yeah, you could route it. I mean, you could get... You could put it in the effects loop if you wanted to. You could get three or four signals out of this. Easy. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I haven't thought about that. Be pretty cool. Uh... Another use case, if you are a like uh, quad cortex user, tone X user, any any type of emulation user, you could utilize this as well. Um, Where do you see it in that aspect? I could see it in multiple places, but I think at the beginning of the chain for the preamp, and then before the modeler, mm -hmm, and then potentially use the loop with the modeler in it. That way you could do the direct out or Whoa. the modeler probably has the direct out as well with the cab simulation. Mm -hmm. But depending on which modeler and what kind of options you have, I could see something like that being pretty useful if you wanted to throw it on there and um, like a totally wet dry. <laughs> oh, that, wow. I didn't my mind didn't even go there. But if you're running a live rig, yeah, but you have your modeler, then you man. The only thing I haven't gotten into with this, the if, and there's a whole lot of dip switches on the side here that you can do yeah. a lot of stuff with. I'd be interested in seeing what like the high pass filter is, because if that is just applicable to like the effects out, like like here's a for instance, if we could use the like take a bass for example, mm -hmm. the DI output of this is clean full range boosted low end if we want mm -hmm. but if our amp send has a high pass like a tube screamer which i think is what they're doing but i'm not completely sure mm -hmm. if the amp send could have a high pass so you could like distort the snot out of a bass there i mean essentially you could do that all with the effects send and just put an eq in there right but it's and that's why I'm like, this is a crazy flexible item. And if it were marketed slightly differently for some reason in the bass world or even instrument like DIs, people will spend a stupid amount of money there. Mm -hmm. But for a preamp that is, you say a, this is a transparent, clean pre, that gets weird because so many boxes are super clean. Like, Universal Audio, even Slate's, uh, like Slate Digital's virtual recording studio, mm -hmm. VRS system, super clean. Like we kind of equate clean to cheap and that didn't used to be the case. Right. Well, because, you know, it used to be you were trying to get clean. Mm -hmm. Like that was hard to get. Right. 
And then we realized, like, oh, harmonic distortion is what we want to hear on a lot of records. Right. Like, that's what that's the cool part about this. But there definitely is a th like. There's so many pieces of gear now, and the, they have vibe built into them where they're not surgically clean anymore mm -hmm. because everything else is clean. So having mm -hmm. having something super clean is almost like the hyper opposite. Right. And it's it's not just clean. It's like honest which isn't something that you find in cheaper pre's that are quote clean right yeah. so um i think the form factor as the pedal is what makes it so versatile and um attractive to me as a primarily bassist but how do you think what do you think would change if this were a rack format instead because i could foresee way higher sales yeah in a rack format because people are accustomed to spending that kind of money mm -hmm. and if you put it in a rack all of a sudden okay you have a preamp and an eq in a rack like oh i have a oh, a channel strip for eight hundred dollars a grace channel strip for eight hundred dollars i don't know why that makes a difference in my mind yeah but it does and all of a sudden it's now one of the cheapest channel strips available and it sounds freaking killer yeah and I mean, I I could easily see stacking a rack with stuff like this, mm -hmm. but because it's a pedal, there's a weird mental block. So it's like <laughs> what, and you see that in a lot of different form factors. Like, uh, why why is it as soon as something is taken either from a rack and put into a pedal or right. the opposite, it's suddenly okay in our brain or not okay? Because I don't know. You can get a sans amp as a rack, or you can get it as a pedal, and I. It, that's I bring up Sans Amp because that is one of the most ubiquitous uh, bass DIs slash preamps that yeah. are out there. You know, your basis, you need a DI. Everybody says get a Sans Amp, and you can get it as a rack. And it seems as though the general consensus is the rack sounds better, and maybe it's different. I don't know. I don't know enough about it. I think it just being me, I would be like my OCD would be way more pleased i don't know how to say that in, in that just, form factor yeah not having like i don't want my preamps strewn about the room this is true i don't want them on my desktop i i totally get it but you jeremy if you get a bunch of racks then you can't have them displayed around the room <laughs> <laughs> i i i definitely see what they're going for what confuses me is that there's not at least not that I can find, because that's what I'm Googling. I'm trying to find if there's a rack mount version of this, and I don't I don't think there is. Yeah. There is, it's probably worth mentioning, there is a little brother, little sister counterpart. The Rex. Yeah, the Rex. Uh, do you remember all the differences? I believe it only supports XLR input. Um, I don't believe it has the boost feature. I, I only out. briefly looked at that one. I never had a hands-on with the Rex. Oh, apparently there's an actress named Grace Rex. That's a cool name. That is. Grace Just Stewart's having Rex as your Rex. last name would be so cool. There it is. The Rex and the Roxy. Why did I just go into an accent? <laughs> <laughs> so, it's 585. Mm-hmm. Smaller form factor. You still, you get a simplified EQ, basically, the the low shelf and the high shelf from this. Okay. Which, that was honestly like the coolest portion of this. The high pass filter is now a switch. So that That's might tell me, yeah, huh? Now my brain is trying to figure out what kind of use case you'd want that for. Why would you want to trigger? A high pass on or off with a foot switch. No, it was sorry. It's a toggle. Like, oh, to the side okay. Of it. I thought you were saying one. Rather of the... than being a dip switch on the side, it's a toggle switch on top. Makes way more sense now. So you still you still get the DI out. You get the mic input. I can't tell from this picture if it's a combi jack or not. No, it just looks like XLR. Mm -hmm. You get the return amp out. So there's no tuner. There's no combi jack in. Is this a combi? Yes. Mm -hmm. Looks like there is no, it is just nine volt, but.
box, so there's no phantom power. So you wouldn't be using... Interesting. You wouldn't be using, like, condensers. At mm -hmm. least not powered via this pedal. There's ways around that for sure. Uh, yeah, because, I mean, this, the, the smaller version looks like you could just set it on a pedal board. Which you could with this, too. It's just this has its own built-in power supply, a whole lot more power. Which is probably why you're getting the boost. You're getting a wet dry. There's a whole lot more electricity here that yeah. you could do stuff with. We also haven't mentioned yet that this can also supply power. It supplies a uh, nine volt, five hundred milliamp. So, which doesn't seem like much. No, but if you were trying to make a small board and you had some simplistic drives or something of that nature, I could I could see that being useful. You're probably not going to use it for like you're not going to hook up a Strymon to no. this and use a really fancy delay or anything. You'd, you'd want to power that separately. But if you're just trying to make a little fly rig with this, I could see that being super useful. I'm trying to get into the, see what the power section is here. <laughs> but the use case for the Rex is harder for me to justify or understand. Right. Um, that seems like an expensive box to me for what it is. Yeah. And so this one, other use cases we haven't mentioned, great for acoustic players. Um, the Rex though, wh why would you want an XLR input? You said it doesn't even have a direct out, right? It only has a, an instrument out or a, an amp out. The Rex... Is there was a DI and an amp out. Oh, okay, so it did support both. Okay. Hmm. It, yeah, it's a weird box, and be because of how it's marketed and the function, like the form factor that they put it in. That said, I love it, but I'm worried that <laughs> that the market won't. <laughs> yeah, is kind of the whole point of this discussion. This is it's a freaking killer box, and nobody's. Nobody told us to say that. <laughs> That's true. I'm, I was confused when I got it and I had it out and I was playing with it for a while. I was actually using it vocally with guitar stuff mm -hmm. and I set up all my pedals and was like pushing it through guitar cabs and playing with different mics and it was wild. And then I was like, I don't. I, I messed with my bass with it for a while and then that's when I was leaving for a trip and I was like. I didn't tell you much about it, but I was like, take this and let me know what you think. Yeah, you basically said, try this out. I'll be back <laughs> in a couple weeks. Tell me what it's for. Yeah. <laughs> Not in a way of like, I don't get it, but in a way of like, I think everyone's going to have a different answer for what this is for. Yes. Which is why I think it just ties it all back to, I think the marketing for this could be different. I'd be curious to, I would be curious to be in the room when they brought this up mm -hmm. not, again, not that I think it's wrong. I'm just like, what an interesting way to market something like this because the studio guys are almost going to reject it outright mm -hmm. because they don't want it on their desk. Live players or live vocalists. I would imagine, although this sounds way better, I could see them using something like a helix yeah. to do a lot of the same things. Mm -hmm. Bass players would be spending a whole lot more money to where this would look like the cheap option as far as a base di and it's just so it's a weird spot <laughs> yeah well and then there's the other end of the spectrum for basis because you have um the mxr preamp is is killer it doesn't the clean sound is not as clean or full as the roxy but you have more affordable options and then you have the astronomically high options so yeah. i do think that there's a hole in the market for something in this price point but the benefits of some of the other base DIs are you have built-in saturation of mm -hmm. some sort. You can trigger a drive, um, things of that nature. Some of them even have like little uh, compression channels and stuff that you can trigger on and off, mm -hmm. which that's getting closer to a multi-effects pedal. Um, but that brings me to, uh, if I'm looking at this strictly as a bassist, those would be things I would be considering. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have, it has a boost and trying that out on bass, I kind of decided I wouldn't use that unless I were pushing into a tube amp and I wanted to get the tube saturation of some kind, mm -hmm. because using that 
just direct. All it did was make me clip in the DAW yeah, or in the mixer or right. whatever you're going to, which is not beneficial. And super useful for a guitar player. Yes. Incredibly useful for guitar. But for guitar... Or doing it as a, like I used it vocally as well to push harder into yeah. your amp. and it's a killer boost. Yes, yeah. But I can't. It's just a weird. It's marketing. Again, a, a very clean boost. Yeah, um, super clean. But for guitar, that's where I I don't see this being as useful because for a guitar player, um, in the traditional sense, I should say, I don't foresee many guitar players using EQ at the beginning of their chain. I don't know. I if I could see from a session player standpoint, if a session player walked in with one of these, whole oh buddy. That's true. That would make my life super easy because I know there's a stupid clean DI on this thing, which getting it right in the beginning of the channel, I mean, it's like built in ready for guitar players, but as a studio offering one to a guitar player, it's hard to incorporate into somebody else's workflow right mm -hmm. off the bat. So again, I guess this would be great for like <laughs> reamping and things of that. Yeah, answer. yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're not going to reamp from this box, but having right. that right there and then they could, they could sculpt whatever they need. They could boost. They mm -hmm. have their effects loop right here and then an amp out like all separate from the DI. Yeah. It's stupid flexible. Those are all good points. Yeah. It's a cool little pedal. It's super interesting. weird though. <laughs> yeah, it's real, really strange. Um, and that's coming from the standpoint of like, I love it. I objectively really, really like this. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm genuinely confused by it. It was like some studio cat who is also like a horn player's fever dream. Yeah. Like this. It's absolutely, this is no question perfect for like a sax player, mm -hmm. but, um, I could see like traveling, uh, producers or engineers really loving this too. A lot of guys doing that kind of thing. Like you're doing the van life kind of stuff. You want a really good channel strip, but you don't have space for a rack mm -hmm. or you're, um, doing vocational tracking somewhere. Oh, that kind of stuff. It's really good. If you got the budget and <laughs> any of those use cases sound good, I'd suggest we, checking it out. And you keep, we keep saying like, if you have the budget, but if you were going to go buy a clean preamp for that price closest, you're probably going to get like, as far as quality of pre, you're not going to get one with an EQ. That's true. And then like, then you're going to be looking at 500 series stuff, which will run you anywhere from 500 on the very low end. Mm-hmm. Um, anywhere to a thousand dollars on the still low end, and that's assuming you already have assuming that you have setup. a rack. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, it's again, it's just if I don't know how to market it correctly, I but know. I feel like it's not marketed correctly. You know what this almost feels like? <laughs> Same vein as like the JHS color box. Similar idea because that is like a, a Neve style preamp with eq yeah they went they went discreet with that though like there's actually transformers in there that you can hit and saturate right yes yeah yeah, yeah. which is another awesome pedal that i i want to get into my arsenal i think for me as a player different use cases me, arsenal sounds like a dirty word though arsenal yeah like it's in your arse <laughs> maybe that's what i meant anyway <laughs> <laughs> That's where I put color boxes. <laughs> Save this one for another video. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll wrap this one up. You can't see it yet. You can't see it. Huh. Huh. <laughs> so I guess in uh, to sum it all up, would you say, Jeremy, that Roxy has the moxie? I do. I mean, I assume I don't know what moxie means. I assume it's good. I think so. Okay, then yes. <laughs> I mean, all these, like, all these hypercritical critiques of this. Can you say critical critiques or is that redundant? I don't know. I don't know if it's alliteration. Yeah, alliteration. <laughs> but I literally like this a lot. It's, I'm, I'm hard on it because it's such a confusing little, like, I don't know what. It would have been really interesting to be in the room when yeah. they designed it. Like, here's my idea. And 
Like I get it, and it's good. It's not. It's not just good. It's awesome at what it does. It's a killer DI. It's a killer boost. It's a killer EQ. There's an effects in. It's a super clean power supply. Like. I think we're both hard on it because <laughs> we want it to do well in the market. Like I would love to see a lot of cats using this and showing up to the studio with it yeah. and seeing it on pedal boards. But I don't. I don't have constructive criticism for it like i'm just like no they're marketing it wrong but i don't know how to market this i wouldn't know what to call it i don't even know how to like convince like even handing it to you i didn't know how to convince you like no this is you're gonna like this right but i was just like i'm not gonna tell you anything about it just use it maybe they just need different colorways and different print and have the exact same models and like this one's a microphone di yeah. this one <laughs> this is your the horn player di this is the bass di <laughs> I mean, weirdly, that might work. Yeah. But. Well, enough about the Roxy for now. Do you have any? Go check one out. If you have a chance to try one, try it. It is a killer box. It's just weird. It is weird. It's shaped weird. And I think that's why it's it's not more popular than it is. Because <laughs> it genuinely sounds great. And it has these little bars. What's not to like? And if you're a bass player and you're even thinking about something like a stupid expensive DI, this should be on your list because it, it really should. If you're if you're looking at nobles and red reddies, do you call it ready or red DI? I say red DI, but so many other people call it a ready. I don't know. Yeah, I've always called it a red DI as well. And to be clear, this is going to do something completely different than those boxes. It's yes. not going to saturate like that. But if you already have like a pedal that you like that saturates, put it in the effects chain and boom, you've got it. So you have the clean thing. You Because how many times have we pulled out the ready and it wasn't right for that one particular situation? Well, and that's way more versatility for this. Right. Because you get this, save the money, and invest the other almost grand that you would additionally spend and get a bunch of different saturating like, pedals that's what it's stupid <laughs> <laughs> stupid good i don't know i hope it sounds like we're gushing over this thing oh, i'm man. just, I'm I'm just excited about it i'm confused about it yeah but i like it anyway what have you been listening to jeremy uh i've actually gone back since this is, this is a big throwback almost two decades <laughs> mine's a throwback too really yeah well you go first oh no what you just you just okay. set it up all right all right i'm not gonna steal the bass from you so i was a, i was actually one of those records that was like formative way back but i hadn't listened to it for a long time and it actually came up during recording uh josh powell stuff mm -hmm. i made a i made a, a I don't know, some production idea came from this old record and it was blindside about a burning fire and it like go if you're into like heavy music like i mean this is 2004 so heavy is defined a little differently i guess but it's heavy mm -hmm. and there's weird meter changes and like it was back then 2004 you didn't hear that a lot yeah like if you want to go listen to probably a, one of the bands that started that whole sound mm -hmm. they're a good one and it's produced really it still stands up that record sounds great not a lot of things still. from the early 2000s hold up no. super well <laughs> no and this does like this does and like emery's the question sounds mm -hmm. great like so many of those like early what did we call it back then it was it was metal back then mm -hmm. but heavy hardcore whatever it was like so many of them sound so good and this one does and it's a trip to listen to like it's a trip nice mine is also a throwback uh different vein but did you ever listen to the squirrel nut zippers <laughs> no no <laughs> uh i don't want to google that <laughs> Scrolling on zippers. Oh, wow. It pops up fast. Yeah. They came about uh, in the 90s during kind of the renaissance of swing. And it, uh, my favorite album of theirs is Hot. And my favorite tune is Blue Angel. But it's this, you could call them a swing band, 
but it's an amalgamation of like think Rat Pack mixed with gypsy jazz. It feels like you're sitting in a speakeasy in like the early 1900s, but <laughs> it is all super incredible. There's Barry Sack solos, there's violin on it. Um, but Blue Angel is my favorite track purely for the vocals. Um, her voice is, to me, it's phenomenal. It's really stunning. Um, Which, what record? Hot, yep. So that first one, and then Blue Angel, towards the bottom of the, the list. Yeah. Huh. That was remastered in 2016. Mm -hmm. So when was this? Uh, I think that one was, like I said, early 90s or mid 90s. What well, 20th anniversary? 20. So it would have been 96. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. So drastically different from any of the heavy stuff, but I don't know what else to say. It feels nostalgic, but it also. Um, is oddly modern feeling to me too in kind of that throwback kind of jazz way but uh give it a listen scroll on zippers hot and then and then delete your browsing history <laughs> that's fair but don't uh at least save the page for the roxy you know if you're <laughs> if you have like the sweetwater tab open and then your google search tab just selectively <laughs> clear the history and don't forget about the cookies as well because that's how they get you um yeah i think that's going to be it for today if you like what you hear what you see if you want to you know let us know that you like it maybe consider hitting subscribe mm -hmm. possibly hit the like button ding that bell ring ling a ding ding the bell what's the most random are uh, you thinking emoji. of a good emoji yeah give me a second here one mississippi okay i want a red telephone a red telephone a red telephone if you stuck with us the whole time drop a red telephone in the comments also I'd be curious after hearing everything that we said about the Roxy, um, am I, am I doing a disservice calling it the Roxy? It's no, just Roxy. Know. Roxy. Um, after everything that we said, how, how would you use it? What do you think would be a good use case for you? Because I'm genuinely curious to hear the different ideas that people have, because it's super versatile and I could see it living in many different places along the chain. Mm -hmm. So how would you use it? Do or, you use it? Or what your instrument is. And if you see another competitor in that field, because I'm curious about that. Yeah. If there are other just weird pedals, let us know what some of your favorites are, because I love looking at pedals. Mm. Amen. Amen. And goodbye. <laughs>